center field is one of the more challenging positions in baseball. A center fielder needs to have speed, and that's because the center fielder needs to be fast in order to cover all of that territory in the outfield. In addition, the center fielder needs to be a good leader. The center fielder is in charge of the entire outfield. He's the captain of the outfield. It's his job to decide who's going to go after a ball and who needs to give way. So that if there's a ball that's on the edge of the center fielder's territory, if the right fielder or the left fielder has a better angle on the ball, he needs to be able to communicate that with the other outfielder in order to make sure that they don't collide and that the ball gets caught. Now, because the center fielders are generally good speedsters, because they generally have good speed, center fielders are also generally good base runners. In this video, we're going to take a look at what we consider to be the top five center fielders in Philly's history. Welcome to Philadelphia Baseball History. On this channel, we talk about the history of baseball from the A's to the Phillies to the 19th century. And sometimes we talk about contemporary baseball issues. So if you love baseball and if you love Philadelphia, stick around and subscribe to our channel. How do you show your home team pride? With mugs, t-shirts, masks, phone cases, tote bags, and so much more. Check out tpublic.com and search for Philadelphia Baseball History. Number five, Lenny Dykstra. And that's why anyone who invested with Lenny Dykstra really should call that number. Lawyers are standing by. Sure, in his retirement, Lenny Dykstra has become quite infamous. In a way, that's just an extension of the way that he used to play during his career. Lenny joined the Phillies in 1989. He was part of a trade that brought Roger McDowell to the Phillies in exchange for Juan Samuel. Now, I have to be honest, when Lenny Dykstra came to play for the Phillies, I wasn't too happy. I considered Dykstra to be nothing more than a crybaby. But of course, your perspective changes once he becomes part of your team. And Lenny was the kind of player who put it all out there on the field, and he wasn't afraid to let his emotion show. He was just the kind of player that was popular with the Philadelphia fans. And so Lenny became a fan favorite. When Lenny Dykstra joined the Phillies in 1989, he was kind of a scrawny, skinny player who had speed. And then by about 1990, well, Lenny had bulked up. And I'll let you conclude how Lenny bulked up in the off season. What is interesting is that he went from being mostly a singles hitter to a hitter who flirted with about 20 home runs in 1993. And Lenny was a good hitter. His batting average was close to 300 in the years that he played with Philadelphia. In fact, in 1990, he flirted with hitting 400 well into June. But Lenny's problem was that, well, he was prone to injury. He only had two complete seasons when he played with the Phillies. And sometimes his injuries were his own doing. Take 1991, for example. Lenny Dykstra was driving Darren Dalton home from attending John Crock's engagement party. And well, Lenny had been drinking a bit. The result was an accident that knocked both Lenny and Darren Dalton out for the rest of the 1991 season. But Lenny Dykstra was an indispensable part of that 1993 white collar throwback team that won the National League pennant. So even though Lenny was prone to injury, it's his grit, determination, and the fact that he was a good hitter that puts Lenny at number five on our list. Number four, Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez spent nine seasons with the Phillies in the 1960s. In fact, he was part of that 1964 team that almost won the pennant. His batting average with the Phillies was a healthy 295, and he gained 100 or more hits in eight of his nine seasons in Philadelphia, topping out at 170 hits in 1963. He totaled 1,110 hits in his time in Philadelphia. And in 1967, he finished second for the batting title right after Roberto Clemente. Because of his longevity and his consistency, Tony Gonzalez makes number four on our list. Number three, Cy Williams. The Phillies obtained the left-hander Cy Williams from the Cubs in 1918. And in 1920, well, that's when baseball changed the ball. Because of that, with the livelier ball, Cy Williams' career started to take off. In his 13 years with the Phillies, 
Four times he led the National League in home runs, and twice he led the major leagues. As a left-handed power hitter, Cy Williams was able to use the dimensions of the Baker Bowl to his advantage. The Baker Bowl was one of those old-time ballparks that they made fit into a city block, and because of that, the dimensions of the outfield were a little strange. In particular, there was a very short right field porch. Williams, as a left-handed hitter, was able to use that short right field porch not only to hit the cheap home runs, but also to gain her extra base hits. In fact, teams began using a shift against Cy Williams 20 years before the Indians used a shift against that other guy named Williams from Boston. And it's because Williams was the first real power hitter for the Phils that we've put him at number three in our list. Now we've already done a deep dive into the career of Cy Williams on this channel, and we'll have a link to that video in the description box below. Number two, Gary Maddox. Like Cy Williams, we've done a deep dive on the career of Gary Maddox, and we will also have a link to that video in the description box below. Gary Maddox was best known for his defense. He was known as the Secretary of Defense. It was said that two-thirds of the Earth was covered by water, and the remaining one-third? Well, that was covered by Gary Maddox. That quote, well, it's usually attributed to Ralph Kiner. But of course, we Philly fans know that Ray Didinger of the Philadelphia Daily News, he wrote it well before Kiner said it on the air. Well, actually, LA Times writer Dan Hafner, well, he said it of Gary Maddox well before Didinger wrote it. For well over a decade, Gary Maddox was a staple of the Philadelphia outfield. He hit 284 in his time with Philadelphia. He won eight gold gloves. Seven of those gold gloves came in a row from 1976 through 1982. And he could step up and perform in the clutch when he was needed. After his playing career, Maddox served as a broadcaster for a while with the Phillies. And to this day, Maddox hosts an annual barbecue cook-off at Citizens Bank Park. Because of his longevity, because of his prowess in the outfield, because of the fact that he was a fan favorite, and because of his community involvement to this day, Maddox makes number two on our list. Before we get to number one, let's talk about a couple of honorable mentions. We'll start off with a Rule 5 acquisition, Adubo Herrera. Now, while it pains me to consider Adubo Herrera an honorable mention, the fact is, ever since 2015, Herrera has brought stability to the Phillies outfield. In fact, when Herrera was dealing with his legal troubles in 2019 and 2020, well, the Phillies had a problem with stability in center field. Moreover, since 2015, Herrera has been one of the most consistent performers offensively. Another Rule 5 acquisition was Shane Victorino, a fan favorite. Victorino worked his way onto the All-Star team twice, and he won three Gold Glove awards. Victorino was a key part of that 2008 World Championship team. Included in honorable mentions here is Von Hayes. Now, Von Hayes was a solid player for nine seasons with the Phillies, but he only spent two seasons in center field, which is why we're including him as an honorable mention here. For the rest of his career in Philadelphia, he split his time between right field and first base. Sliding Billy Hamilton is in a similar situation. Yes, Sliding Billy Hamilton was part of that 1894 team where the Phillies had four outfielders who batted over 400. However, I can't include him in the top five list because even though he spent five seasons with Philadelphia, only two of those seasons did he serve as a center fielder. All the other times he played mostly right field. And this brings us to number one on our list. Have you guessed it? Number one, Richie Ashburn. Richie Ashburn was a stable part of the Phillies outfield from the late 1940s until the end of the 1950s. He had an incredible rookie season in 1948. He won the batting title in 1955 and in 1958, and his defense was impeccable. For years, Richie Ashburn, along with Robin Roberts, were the only two Phillies who had that round plaque that hung in the outfield to signify that they were honored by having their number retired. And this was before the Phillies adopted their so-called rule that the only retired numbers of players who were in the Hall of Fame. In fact, Ashburn, Carlton, and Schmidt, they all had their numbers retired before they were inducted into the Hall of Fame. Richie Ashburn, of course, has a number of great stories from his playing days. There was the time that he hit the same woman with a foul ball twice in the same at-bat. 
there was also the time when he had to learn a little bit of Spanish in order to communicate with Ilio Chacon, the shortstop. You see, he and Chacon would bump into each other a number of times going after the same fly ball. So Ashburn learned to use the words, yo la tengo, which means I've got it. This helped with his communication with Chacon. However, after he collided with Frank Thomas in the outfield, Thomas asked Ashburn, what does yellow tango mean? And when his playing career ended, Ashburn became a beloved part of the Phillies broadcast team. And for well over a decade, he broadcast alongside another Philadelphia legend, Harry Callis. And Whitey, well, he had a favorite pizza place in South Philly, Salibres. And sometimes he would order a pizza while he was on the air. Well, the Phillies got annoyed with this, telling him that since they were not a sponsor, they didn't want Salibres to get airtime. But Ashburn and Callis were encouraged to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries of Phillies fans. So when Ashburn got a hankering for a Celebrate's Pizza and he was on the air, he would say, hey, happy birthday to the Celebrate twins playing in pepperoni. And that was the signal to have two pizzas delivered to Veterans Stadium. Richie Ashburn also became a columnist for the Philadelphia Daily News. In fact, he joked with Harry Callis that he was going to miss the opportunity of being inducted into the Hall of Fame in three ways. Richie Ashburn was hamstrung because he played center field at the same time that Willie, Mickey, and the Duke were playing center field up in New York. So he didn't get the same attention as his New York counterparts. This was a fact that was lamented by George Will in his book, Men at Work, who pushed for Ashburn's inclusion in the Hall of Fame. In fact, there was a campaign to try to get Ashburn in the Hall of Fame with the slogan, why the hall not? Eventually, the Veterans Committee recognized their mistake and elected Ashburn into the Hall of Fame. In fact, Ashburn was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1995, which was the same year that Mike Schmidt was elected into the Hall of Fame. He and Ashburn were the only two living ball players who were inducted that year. As a result, Philadelphia fans took over Cooperstown in the last weekend of July of 1995 in order to be at the ceremony and celebrate the induction of two very popular Phillies into the Hall of Fame. So as you can see, how could we not make Richie Ashburn the number one center fielder of all time for the Philadelphia Phillies? So now it's your turn. What do you think? Did we miss anybody? Would you have ordered them differently? Let us know in the comment section below. Give us a like, tell your friends about us, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you have any ideas for topics that we can cover in the future, please let us know in the comments below. If you would like to see more of these videos, please consider becoming a patron through Patreon. Again, we'll have a link in the description box below.